Good morning. This is exciting for me. I remember um, coming to my first LTL and being introduced when I first started with the district and how nervous I was. And that was eight years ago, and I'm still really nervous. Um, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the end of the legislative session. Uh, for, those, for those of you that are regular attendees, I was here in January. I think I was here in April. Uh, so I'm not going to cover all the same material again. I'm just going to kind of give you what happened at the very end. And I just want to sort of put an exclamation point on the balanced budget because, as you know, the legislative session doesn't end until like June 3rd. Uh, and that's after our initial budget is done. So we don't get information about our final budget until uh, basically after the budget is finished. So making those adjustments and having that balanced budget in a 30-day period uh, is an amazing feat, and I'm really proud to be able to um, tell you the outcome of the legislative session. So uh, as Kristen said, not all of our prayers were answered, but I'm really uh, proud and positive of the way the legislative session ended. I think there was a commitment on behalf of the governor and on behalf of the legislature to do everything they could to shift money towards K-12, and in some cases at the expense of other important programs. Uh, but you saw that the distributive school account, our per-pupil funding, was up. Uh, categorical programs that are important for our school district, like Read by Three and uh, weighted funding, up. New spending for the first time in our state's history on uh, specifically for school safety initiatives, that money was up. Uh, and a commitment on behalf of the uh, governor and the legislative branch to revisit the way we fund education in Nevada. Uh, I, I can't tell you how important I think this is going to be over the next two years in what funding and education looks like in Nevada for the next 50 years. Uh, there was some really strong legislation to revisit that so we don't end up at the bottom of every list in how we fund education in this country. Uh, I'll be honest, we didn't get everything. Uh, some of the programming changes were mixed. Uh, we did make progress in some areas, and I'm going to go through some that I think impact you the most directly. Um, but, you know, honestly, the ability for the legislature to add unfunded and underfunded mandates is just sort of the way they do business. Uh, so there are some new things. Uh, we tried to minimize that, but, um, you know, there, there will be some new unfunded mandates, I think, coming your way. I'm not going to go through each one of these pieces of legislation in detail. I know there's a handout for you. Um, but these are big bills that dealt with uh, the financial contribution of the state towards K-12. So I'm not going to go through each of these, but I just want to tell you that in every single place they could, they put money for K-12. And some of it was about 11 p.m. on the very last day of the legislative session. Uh, money got put into bills that even really had nothing to do with K-12. Uh, and that's really the way that the legislative process works. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all these, but some, some, a real commitment on behalf of the legislature to put money into K-12 in basically every single way they could, including my favorite on this slide is um, Senate Bill 505, which rectified the error that was made in the last legislative session that shorted the Washoe County School District to the tune of about $8 million. So we finally saw that money come through, and that's something I'm really proud of. Again, I'm not going to go through each of these. I'm just trying to make the point that in every single one of these categories, there's additional resources. Money is up in every single one of those categories. Um, we didn't see any reductions in our categorical funding that, in fund, that funds important programs we know that are paying for a lot of things in your schools that are not paid for through our distributive school account. A big emphasis this legislative session on safe and healthy schools, that being uh, mental health of our students, school safety initiatives, so lots of legislation around those things, bullying, uh, and I listed some other bills there. I, the one I want to call out is AB 186 around restorative practices. I know there's going to be some additional work done um, for how you deal with discipline issues and what restorative practice means in your buildings. Um, a lot of emphasis on suicide, reporting, uh, prevention efforts, uh, and prevention of child abuse. So read by three. I think when I came in January, I said this is it. This is our last chance to make modifications to mandatory retention before it becomes effective our last legislative session. And that was a big priority for everybody. We had a little bit um, of a, a down part in the middle of the legislative session because our bill sponsor and champion died unexpectedly, the chair of the Assembly Education Committee, who was really the champion for this read by three work. That was a really difficult time uh, and a very important time for this legislation. But fortunately, 
recently, a couple of legislators, including one from Washoe County, picked up where Assemblyman Thompson had left off and carried this legislation across the finish line. It removes the mandatory retention component for our third graders, but provides additional support and requirements around interventions. So it's not focused on punitive measures, it's really focused on making sure our students have everything they need to be able to hit that mark, and if they don't, what's our plan for getting them there before they leave elementary school? Senate Bill 185, this was a big one I know last session, I call this my sleeper bill, uh, where we were, how to change the way we uh, background checked our volunteers. So we made some changes this legislative session with the support of Senator Ganser. I hear some clapping. Uh, we removed that pesky little word regular uh, from the law, which I think will be helpful. So only volunteers that are left unsupervised with students will need to go through that background check. Now I know we did a lot of them last year for, they're five years now, but now we're hoping to bring those people back into our buildings um, and make them feel welcome and, and not send them through a difficult process. So I think that's exciting. There's going to be more regulations and more work on that coming, but a big important change uh, for our volunteers. Uh, <laughs> I did this slide before I left on vacation and then I was getting emails in Europe about a data breach, but um, I will just leave this here that uh, <laughs> incident, incident. I didn't get the coaching on the language. Not a breach, just an incident. Got it. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll see you in the woodshed, Irene. Okay. Got it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> nothing to see. Nothing to see. Uh, but some legislation around data privacy, uh, basically trying to get a handle on making sure our students' data is safe and a process that I was happy to be able to support the bill um, with Robert by my side uh, because a lot, of the Washoe County, a lot of the requirements in the bill are things the Washoe County School District was already doing. That's not true for the rest of the state. I think this is going to have a bigger impact on them than us, um, but still an important piece of legislation. So what's next? Uh, Obviously, the next legislative session doesn't start until January of 2021. I know that seems like a long time away, but it's already creeping up in my mind. So a lot of regulatory work happening in the next six months. Then we'll have a lot of interim committee work where the legislature meets and talks about what they want to do in the next legislative session. And then I know it's your favorite season, campaign season, uh, where everybody's running on an education platform and they know how they're going to change the world and um, they have big checkbooks and all that. And so we're really going to work hard like we always do every interim to engage those candidates, get them into schools, build relationships with you all so that they feel like they know people in the Washoe County School District, they trust us, they know that we're doing good work in our buildings every day. Uh, so when I call you up or shoot you an email and say, hey, would you mind if I brought over so-and-so for an hour to come visit your school that's in their district? Uh, I know it's an additional uh, work on your part, but I just can't tell you how important it is for them to have connections and relationships with our school leaders, and so I really appreciate in advance uh, your accommodation when, when that time comes. I know we've even had several requests for presidential candidate visits, um, as Nevada is an important primary state for our presidential candidates, the 20-something uh, Democratic candidates for president. So um, thank you for all the work that you did this past school year. Thank you for what you're doing on behalf of my own children for this upcoming school year. Uh, and I'm excited to support this work and excited to come back and tell you uh, that the legislature and the governor's office is committed to Washoe County School District and seeing us grow in the future. So thanks. I'm going to have Dr. McNeil come back.